Hello friends, I welcome you all here at TNV Academy. In this session, we are going to talk about the clause 8.2, service portfolio of an international standard, ISO IEC 20000-1-2018, Information Technology Service Management. In this session, we shall cover all the requirements of clause 8.2, service portfolio in detail along with appropriate examples. As the requirements of the clause 8.2 depend upon the requirements of clause 6 and 8.1, I would like to recommend you referring these clauses of ISO 20000-1-2018 also for better understanding of clause 8.2. Now, the mandatory documentation requirements as evidence or proof under this clause 8.2 are Clause 8.2.2 the service requirements for existing services, new services, and changes to services shall be determined and documented. Clause 8.2.3 The organization shall determine and document control of parties involved in the service life cycle. Clause 8.2.4 The organization shall create and maintain one or more service catalogs. 8.3.2 Clause 8.3.2 Business Relationship Management Under this clause, the customers, users and other interested parties of the services shall be identified and documented. Clause 8.3.3 Service Level Management Under this clause, for each service delivered, the organization shall establish one or more SLAs based on the documented service requirements. Clause 8.3.4 For each internal supplier or customer acting as a supplier, the organization shall develop, agree and maintain a documented agreement to define the service level targets, other commitments, activities and interfaces between the parties. Clause 8.4.3 Capacity Management Under this clause, the capacity requirements for human, technical, information and financial resources shall be determined, documented and maintained, taking into consideration the service and performance requirement. Clause 8.5.1.1 Change Management Policy Under this clause, a change management policy shall be established and documented. Clause 8.5.2.2 The new or changed services shall be designed and documented to meet the service requirements determined in Clause 8.2.2. Clause 8.6.1 Incident Management Under this clause, major incidents shall be classified and managed according to a documented procedure. Clause 8.6.2 Service Request Management says that service request shall be recorded and classified. Clause 8.6.3 Problem management defines problems shall be recorded and classified. Clause 8.7.1 Service availability management says that at planned intervals, the risk to service availability shall be assessed and documented. Clause 8.7.2 Service continuity management defines that at planned intervals, the risk to service continuity shall be assessed and documented. Clause 8.7.3.1 says that the information security policy shall be documented and take into consideration the service requirements and the obligations in Clause 6.3. Clause 8.7.3.2 Information security controls defines that at planned intervals, the information security risk to the SMS and the services shall be assessed and documented. Decisions about information security controls shall be documented. Clause 8.7.3.3 Information security incidents This clause says that information security incidents shall be recorded and classified. Let's discuss about the outcome of this session. After completing this session, you will be enabled to understand service portfolio and its requirements necessary to support the operation of the SMS and the services. Now, 
Let's have an introduction of clause 8.2 service portfolio. This is a new section in the standard in a more comprehensible way. It is supportive here to look at the note from the standard. A service portfolio is used to manage the whole life cycle of all services, including projected services, those under development, life services defined in the service catalogs, and services that are to be removed. The management of the service portfolio confirms that the service provider has the right mix of services. Service portfolio activities in this document include planning the services, control of parties involved in the service life cycle, service catalog management, asset management, and configuration management. In simple words, your organization should know what services it is providing, which ones are upcoming to the end of life and those that are in the pipeline for initiation. Without this knowledge, it is hard for any organization to establish an effective service management system. Let's talk about planning services. Planning services is a continuous cycle and when your organization comes to implement a service management system against the requirements of standard, it will find that processes will possibly be in place that may either meet the requirements of the standard or need slight development to bring in line with new requirements. Clause 8.2.2 helps your organization to align its existing services to meet the requirements of the standard and should be used as an indication out to other parts of the standard. For example, Clause 8.5 Service Design, Build and Transition Clause 8.2.2 helps your organization to align its existing services to meet the requirements of the standard and should be used as an indication out to other parts of the standard. For example, Clause 8.5 Service Design, Build and Transition Your organization should understand its service management lifecycle clearly. How do new services get identified and brought into the life situation? How are the existing services managed and changed while they are live? And what is the process for bringing a service to end of life? Good project management that covers the full life cycle of the service is potentially a perfect method for managing this component. Once your organization understands its cycle, it can then define the criteria and requirements of existing services, new services, and changes to services. This is a documented information requirement in the standard. When determining the criticality of services, there are many impacts that need to be taken into consideration as there may be need of different interested parties that must be understood including your organization itself, clientels, third parties, and suppliers. There may be changes required to working practices of your organization so that the service management system is not at probabilities with the service management policy and service management objectives. The standard says that known limitation and risk must be considered when setting up the service management system. Known limitation is a term that often confuses organization, but there are no hidden meanings here. Simply look at the service and determine what could limit the delivery of the service, human resources, equipment resources, skills, site accessibility times, travels or specific limitation recorded in the service contract with clients. If your organization conducts a sort and pastel analysis, this may help to identify known limitation and risk to the services being delivered. Any changes in your organization must be ranked. Further information on this will be given in separate session. Now, let's talk about control of parties involved in the service lifecycle. This swaps the governance of processes operated by other parties in the 2011 standard and from the outset the requirements are much clearer than before with regards the need of your organization with ISO 20000-1 2018 must be accountable 
for all components of the management system irrespective of which party is delivering it. In simple words, when a service is defined, your organization will determine who will deliver each element of the service and set appropriate SLAs and OLAs to ensure that there is a coordinated and effective approach towards the delivery of the service to the customer. When suppliers are selected, there must be clear criteria in place for that selection process to ensure that the supplier can deliver an effective and reliable service. This should also extend to criteria for acceptable degree of subcontracting. We need to remember that the further a task is subcontracted away from the original supplier, the more difficult it can become to deliver that service to acceptable quality levels. Typically, organizations add to contracts that if a service is to be subcontracted away by the supplier, then appropriate approvals must be gained from your organization coordinating the delivery of the service. Criteria for selection might include Ability to deliver on time Effective business service continuity plans Appropriate certifications Cost effective service reporting and right to audit When determining the measurement and evaluation of performance and effectiveness of service, it is important to ensure that the results will give meaningful data. This is achieved by understanding what information you need from the results to enable improvements to be made. Now, coming to the non-conformity, please see the Auditor Finding Action Report and see on screen for writing non-conformities under this clause. I will leave it up to you now. Please go through this and try to understand the various components of this non-conformance report. Now, let me talk in brief about the common mistakes auditor do while auditing. It is highly recommended that being an auditor, you should avoid some common mistakes like reporting of findings without verifying evidence, ignoring the facts, asking irrelevant questions to organization and starting consulting activities with the client, etc. Auditors should avoid these kind of mistakes which are very common in nature during the audits. Dear friends, we have now come to the conclusion of this training session. See you soon with an exciting new topic. Till then, goodbye.